Now let's talk about containers. Now containers get progressively more advanced and I'm going to show you um, an article that will actually walk you through how to do sheet swapping and it's actually a really, uh, really awesome uh, iteration of it. You can do some pretty cool stuff. Um, but what I want to do uh, in particular to show you is how containers allow you to really take your formatting to the next level. Uh, and we'll, but we'll introduce containers sort of broadly to start. And I'm just checking, we're about 30 minutes into our presentation, so we're right where I want it to be. Um, that gives us time to do sort of the bonus features after this and maybe open it up for some general uh, Q&A that I might be able to answer as a class. So let's go over to our little book here. I built a couple of charts here. I've got a bar chart, a scatter plot, this little detail, this text table. And what I'm going to do is bring them into a dashboard. Now, what containers allow me to do, I'll just bring these in really quickly so we can kind of use an example. So what containers allow me to do is to sort of organize this space in advance. So I sort of block it out. Notice when I brought in my bar chart, it filled the entire available space. So containers allow me to set up my partitions a bit better. Now for most charts or dashboards, I don't need to do that because if it's simple like this and it's just got three charts, me dragging and dropping it in there, Tableau will figure it out. But what Tableau does is any sort of object that I bring in, it automatically throws it into this vertical container. So you can see how this works. Other objects that get brought in there get stacked on top of each other. So if I were to come over to, let's say, this uh, scatter plot and bring in, let's say, a filter by category, well, it throws it automatically into that vertical container for me. I also have the option of a horizontal container, which is basically the same exact thing, except I can put things in there side by side by side. Now, from a, uh, a formatting standpoint, containers get, like I said, there's a lot of use cases where containers sort of come up and say, hey, we're really useful versus just sort of partitioning your dashboard. I'll give you some examples. So the first one is you've got two options. You've got tiled and floating on how you want to do your dashboard. And most new uh, Tableau users just go to floating because that way they don't have to learn how to drag this stuff in and kind of get everything positioned right because it's a little bit tricky and getting it set up exactly correctly the way you want it to be. Um, but my advice as a trainer is start with tiled because most of the stuff you're going to be building is so simple in terms of the structure and layout. You don't need to make it more complex with floating. Floating gets hard because if I want to move something, I have to go manually move and resize everything on my on my dashboard, whereas tiled, I resize one thing, everything else around it adjusts. So it's a bit easier to manage. But if you want to do something more advanced, you can do floating. But there's actually something that's in between those, which is sort of using tiled and floating together. So let me build another dashboard here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, these three charts again, but I'm going to have them tiled inside of a container. And then I'm going to make the container float. So let's bring in a container first. So I'll bring in floating. I'll, I'll rather, I'll change it to floating and I'll bring in my bar chart. So there's a floating container there, a horizontal one. I'll bring my bar chart in. Now to do this, by the way, just a little pro tip here, your containers are blue and your objects when you drag them in will be in gray. So you'll know the difference just by looking at the colors. So I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to hold down the shift key to drag this into my floating container so that it's tiled inside of it. And now you can see it's gray. That's, I've got the object, or in other words, this particular worksheet selected. Um, a shortcut to grab the container is just to double click on this little handle up here. And now you've got the container. You can see it's gone back to blue. So I've got that there. I'll just move this guy over here. Maybe I'll resize it so that I've got some space there. Now I'm going to bring in another horizontal container, again, floating. I'll put them underneath my chart here, all the way across. And I'm going to float in, uh, I'm gonna rather tile in the scatter and detail inside of this. Again, holding down the shift key, there's my scatter. And then holding down the shift key again. There we go. So now I've got two objects inside of this uh, container. So if I do wanna reposition things, now I can just position a group of objects 
And if I happen to have, say, filters and other, you know, color legends, I can put all of those inside that container. And that way it gives me sort of that intermediate step between having everything floating. It's sort of the wild, wild west. And you have to move everything separately, resize everything separately. Um, so that's sort of a, a, cool, pretty, a pretty cool use case as well. The other thing that I'm going to point out um, based off of what I've just built here is how you can use containers to help with your formatting. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add a little dashboard action to this scatter plot so that it's filtering this detail over here. And I'm going to use an exclude. So if I don't choose anything, there's nothing selected there. So that we're kind of using this to power so I can go and see individual, um, I guess, orders and see how we did on that particular order. So let's go up here to dashboard actions. I'm assuming that you guys know this. I'm not going to spend too much time step by step explaining what we're doing here. Uh, we'll say scatter to filter the detail, just to give us some context. I want it to happen on a select for the scatter plot, and it's affecting the detail. And then the magic option is obviously I'm excluding all values if nothing's selected. So it's going to be blank. So I click OK. I click OK. So now when I click on this, I have one particular order. I click off of it. I have no orders. So now these two charts are very much related. In terms of the structure and layout of my dashboard, I really want my user to understand this is a combo. These two things here are related. If I just used my layout as it is right here, let's say I go and add a border to it. Um, I'll give it a little bit of inner padding. How about we just throw five on there? That looks like its own chart and it kind of isolates this guy here. That's exactly what I'd want to do on my bar chart. But instead, what I want to do is make these guys look like they're, they're part and parcel. They're together. So with my container, I was undoing my little options there. With my container, I have the same layout options. So now I can put a border around both of these and put some formatting around it so that they look like they belong to each other. And so from a user perspective, that's far more useful. Maybe I'll even take this another step. I'll throw in the, um, uh, because I'm sending over the category as well as the order ID, that's going to make that a bit trickier. I'd need to re-engineer my chart a little bit, but I could make this title dynamic. And what I would recommend that you do on top of that is bring in a text object, have it sit on top of both of those inside of your object, and then format it so that it looked exactly like a title. So it looks like one complete unit. I'd have to bring in another container. I'd have to take these guys and put them into a vertical container and then put these guys inside of that. So I don't want to do all those steps and waste some time. But my point is you can see how you can use these, these containers to really get advanced in your formatting so that you can help focus the eye on how things interrelate on your dashboard. And of course you can do sheet swapping because, um, the way containers work are, is that uh, any sheet in there will take up 100%. So if you've got a sheet here and a sheet there, and this one is completely filtered, this guy will extend to 100%. Uh, and as a result, you can use a combination of a filter and parameters to hide one sheet, one will go to 100%, and then hide the other sheet, and the other one will go to 100%. I've got a link that um, I'll bring up to show you that exact point. And uh, remind me to come back to this slide here because I want to share that for you. Um, this is one of our colleagues here at Interworks. So you can kind of see, you click on the scatter plot, you see the scatter plot, you click on the, the map. So it's, it, it gives you far more flexibility than say just parameterizing your dimensions and measures. You can actually completely swap out the chart uh, and have a lot more uh, real estate that you can use. Um, I'm just trying to think how I can share this. I don't think I can chat you. What I'll do is I'll chat this link over to one of my colleagues that is helping me with questions. And then I'll see, I'll let them sort of noodle on how to share that link with you. Um, I'm such a nice person. Let me just drop that into our little internal message. So I can make sure that if you guys want to read that article and it's, it's got two parts that so it gets progressively more advanced and cool, you guys have that opportunity. So Bill, I'm going to slack that over to you right now. There you go, Bill. Awesome. 
So containers, pretty fun, pretty powerful. And again, they do a lot of stuff. They can do a lot more. The other thing that's really cool about these containers is if I hop over here to my layout, um, all of those containers and objects are down here in my dashboard hierarchy. And this, this container right here is that one right there. So you can see I can go and select it. So if I wanted to rename this so it's not just horizontal, horizontal, tiled, vertical, I could right click on it and rename the dashboard item. And so maybe that's my scatter analysis. And so that helps me understand exactly what I'm looking for. Because I don't know about you, but some of my dashboards, I feel like I end up with like 50 things down here. And I'm literally just clicking on different horizontal containers to figure out which one I need to get to. So you can obviously help organize it a bit so you can get around your dashboard a bit easier while you're editing it. Thank you very much. Bye, everyone.